35. Okay, so we have uh, quite a bit of people. Thank you for coming. Uh, we have uh, a, a great event today. We, we're going to have a Water Shark CDF and Irvin, uh, who is a member of Pacific Hackers, has been so gracious to put this event together for us. I uh, hope you enjoy it and look at this as a way of not only training and, and learning new things, but prepare yourself for com future competitions. Remember, Hack Miami specifically has made it twice to the finals uh, at the Packet Hacky Village in Las Vegas. And I think Sam, who's here, has won it. So we have like some good, good, great people here. Um, so you can do this too. And we want to see, actually, that's one of our milestones at, at the Pacific Hackers. We want to see teams this year. Like we want everybody that we can get in a contest. And we want you to do as best as you can. That's something that, uh, you know, may not make you money, but may get you a much better job. And it gives you a lot of, of cred within the community when you place in the first stand and you do very good. Not only that, now you know, or you have an experience that you can pass to others. So um, I place a um, uh, Discord invite. Most of you know who I am. I co-founded Hack Miami. Uh, we meet uh, every two weeks. Uh, and we have now uh, two, uh, uh, basically the two calls together. Uh, and we're doing some, some great stuff with content and we'll continue doing meetings. Next week, we have a, a, a SANS instructor that is, is very well known for digital forensics. Uh, we have a com online community going on. We have a place where we, we post job offers. Uh, if you need help with training, questions, uh, we have very seasoned professionals that can help you, give you a hand. Um, again, I would like to emphasize that we do have a job channel, which nobody seems to care because all of you are employed and <laughs> It's either you're very well paid or I don't know what's going on, but every time I post something, nobody says anything. I mean, with, with a section of some people, uh, which I'm sure there will be play soon, uh, we got quite a bit of offers in there. So um, enjoy the, the, the competition today. Thanks again to Urban. And with that, um, take it away, man. All right, uh, thank you, Rod, for inviting me over. Um, here's a little bit about me. Uh, I have a couple of certs. I teach cybersecurity at Cabrillo College in Santa Cruz, California. I also run a cyber competitions program for the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, I also run the cybersecurity contest for Skills USA Florida, as well as a couple of contests in California. But if I had to summarize all of that, I'm a troublemaker. Uh, since we are on Zoom, and I will be moving across screens throughout the next two hours. I suggest if you are using the Zoom client to change this setting in, in uh, Zoom under share screen, uh, click on maintain current size. That way, as I change from Wireshark to the CTF and back, you don't get the full screen thing that takes over everything. It just makes life easier. The website is wiresharkctf.infosecurban.info. And I'll put it in the chat. Oops, where's that picture? That picture should have shown, where'd it go? Anywho. Let me log out and I'll log in. You'll need to click on this to register and create an account. You need Wireshark to play this game and it's downloadable for any of the operating systems. I have a Discord server for all my classes. So if you wanna continue playing the CTF afterwards and you have some questions later, you can ask there. I have made some videos with uh, Sam Bound in his class for this CTF. So if you want to see them, just click on this link. And then if you want to see other classes that I teach, uh, you can click on this last link. But go ahead and make an account. Lastly, 
There are five categories in the CTF. For people who are new to Wireshark and new to CTFs, uh, we're going to do the beginner category. You can also jump to the Wireshark 101. For those who have some Wireshark knowledge, jump into network analysis. And those who are comfortable, jump to troubleshooting in Wireshark workbook. Feel free to go throughout the, the CTF as you wish. Uh, all these questions will be available. This CTF will stay on um, as long as possible. So you are welcome to uh, start with me in beginning and then continue on uh, you know, as much as you want. I'll be resetting this uh, when the next event happens, but uh, these questions will stay up and the contest will stay up itself. So let's go to the CTF itself. Once you make an account, you will be uh, presented with the challenges. And the first category you see is troubleshooting. I will be walking you through the beginner category, which is all the way at the bottom of the page. So just go ahead and scroll all the way down to beginner. And I will walk you through as many as we can in the next two hours. But again, if you feel that you're comfortable with Wireshark and you want to try any of the others, go ahead. Throughout the, the two hours, we'll take little breaks and we'll see where we stand in the scoreboard. And it, it looks like somebody's already scoring. Uh, so let me know that you have Wireshark installed, you have made an account, and you have scrolled down in the challenges to beginner and have uh, the first question, 1001, up and ready. And to see the question, you just click on it. Anybody stuck making an account? Anyone stuck or still downloading Wireshark? I see ready, awesome. So in all the beginner category, I have some text ahead that you can read if you'd like. At the bottom is always the question. For this specific question, we need to open this file that you see under follow and analysis example. So just click on this link and you will download the first Wireshark file. It should download relatively quickly, then go ahead and open it up in Wireshark. So in this example, we have somebody who's going to a site. They make an HTTP GET request in packet 10. And then if everything goes well, there's a 200 OK response. The question that we're looking to answer here is that what packet does the user request slash download.html. So in Wireshark, here is packet 10, and you can see in the info column, the get slash. And then you see the response uh, the, of the okay for that request. So what we're looking for is for a get packet that has slash download. One way that you can do this is simply scrolling, looking at the info column, as we can see, as that client kept asking for more things from that site. Eventually, we will find download. When you find it, that the packet number on this site is the answer. Another way that you can make things faster is go back to packet 10. And here in the, in the packet details pane, in this second window, we can open up the HTTP, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol site. We see this get, we can 
expand that, we see the, re the request method. That is what we're looking for, for a certain request method. You can right click it and say, apply as a filter selected. So once again, you could go to packet 10, right click, oh, sorry, uh, left click on hypertext transfer protocol, left click on the get, and when you see get request or get method, request method get, I can read, right click on it, go to apply as filter, and then select it. You will instantly see that Wireshark will put a display filter up in this bar. And now we have filtered. Instead of seeing 23,000 packets, we're only seeing 74. So finding the answer will be that much faster now. I can't apply as filter. Uh, so when you opened, when you clicked on packet 10, you went into the details, the packet details pane, you opened up hypertext transfer protocol. You also opened up get and went down to request method and right clicked on that and hit apply as a filter selected. So looking at 74 packets, you should find a get slash download .html. And that number is the answer. And it looks like we have people already solving stuff. Awesome. Yeah, somebody with 70 points. Serlin. Good job, good job. Okay, ready for the next question? So we're still looking for a thousand one. Okay. In a thousand two, the second question under the beginner category, we have VLAN traffic. So what we want to find is what VLAN is the communication happening on. I took a picture of the packet that we need to look into, which is packet number one. And I've shown you exactly where the answer is. So all you have to do is download the file, which you have the link for right here. Then you'll open it up in Wireshark. and you should be able to see the answer right in front of you. Look at what, look at the, the file when you open it up in Wireshark, compare it to the picture that I have on the CTF. So you have an idea as to where you're looking at. That number, is the answer. Good, we have people solving away.
If I'm going too fast, too fast please say so. If uh, you need clarification on a question, please ask away. A thousand three is another simple question. Wireshark tells you all the packets that are in a trace file. Open this PCAP and answer the simple question, how many packets are in the trace file? And I'll give you a clue. Wireshark tells you the number of packets that you not only see, but the total number of packets that exist in a trace file at the bottom bar of the application. So go ahead and download app YouTube one, open it up in Wireshark and take a quick look at the bottom of the application. The total number is the answer to this question. Actually, I just should just hit don't ask again. A thousand four, and I think the next couple of questions don't have a, a trace file to open. They all look at this picture here. So again, there's some stuff to read if you'd like. Um, oh, I see a question. Uh, yes, this is all being recorded and will be posted, I believe, in Hack Miami's um, YouTube. Yes, this will be uh, he, this will be posted in the YouTube channel. I was going to ask you, can I tweet the the scoreboard? I have no problem you tweeting the scoreboard. Okay, because they're probably going to attack it, so uh, I'll tweet at them. Okay. Uh, so this question, looking at the at the diagram, what clients can Wireshark number one listen to? Wireshark number one is is right here. What clients can it listen to? A thousand five looks at the same question, but asks what end devices can Wireshark number two listen to? Wireshark a thousand six or uh, beginner 1006 asks, can Wireshark 2, this guy, listen to server A? Can this computer running Wireshark see what's happening in server A? And 1007 asks, can Wireshark number two, this computer, see the network 10.1.0.0. So that set of four questions is related to the same picture. Again, if you get stuck on any one of these, 1004, 2007, please ask away. A thousand four accepts three different formats, and it's just the the client uh, alphabetical letter, so you don't have to put client in front of every single one.
Okay. Then let's, uh, anybody stuck in any of the thousands before I move on to the two thousands? Okay, let's move on to 2000. We have another packet to download, HTTP download bad. So let's download that file and open it up. The question is, what is the round trip time from the server to the client? Packets one and two. So we can focus our attention on the first two packets and see what is the time between packets one and two. Well, by default, Wireshark tells you the time from packets one and on. So to answer this question, we really just have to look at packet two and the time that is given to it which is right here. That would be the answer to that question. Because we're establishing uh, the how, you know, where, how does time work with Wireshark? In the next question, 2002, we're going to open up a different file, a slowboat.pcapng. And this asks, what is the server delay between the act and the get request for packets 9 and 10? So this one is a little different. because this is not set at zero. So this number is not necessarily accurate if we want to calculate the, the time between the two. So what we need to do is to turn packet nine into a temporary reference. And the easiest way to do that is to right click packet number nine and set it as the time reference. That means starting from packet nine, everything else will be calculated based on this start time. So when you set it, packet 10 changes because packet nine becomes the reference time. So your answer becomes whatever packet 10 is because we've shifted the time. Uh, now there is a question in the chat. Is there a way to download all captures from a single source? Well, all these trace files come from, uh, from Laura Chapel. I forget the site off the top of my head, but I'm sure it's easy to find. Here we go. Oops, so let me copy this and paste it in the chat. If you want to get all of the trace files that were that are in the entire CTF, you would need to go into these books, the Wireshark workbook, Wireshark 101, troubleshooting, and the big book. So I'm going to click on the big book, for example. And you would download all the trace files. And that would give you 
all the trace files you need for the network analysis section and, uh, and this at the beginner as well. Uh, the troubleshoot relates to the troubleshoot category, Wireshark 101 for the Wireshark 101 category and so on and so forth. So you can download all of them at once. It's about two and a half gigabytes worth. There is a help on question 2001. So the initial round trip time uh, between packet one and two, and that was HTTP download bad. Oh, I see. Uh, the there's a flag. All, all of them have zero point, as shown by Wireshark. Don't forget the the zero at the beginning. So if you're looking at Wireshark for question two thousand one, you you want to copy it uh, as Wireshark shows it to you. That, that just makes it easy for everyone to you know, uh, get the feel for how to use Wireshark and what it tells you. So we modeled the, the questions after, after how Wireshark shows them to you. So let's see our scoreboard. Serlin is definitely in the lead with Rat not that far behind. Cool. Let's see, I did 2002. So now let's do 2003. Hey, we need Slobo, which we already have downloaded. So we can reopen slow boat for this question. How many bytes are in display using this filter? Luckily enough, we can just copy paste that filter that's in bold into this bar where it says apply a display filter. Then we hit enter and the result is eight packets. That's cool, but that doesn't give us the answer we're looking for. And this is a math class where we have to figure out the, the bytes together. Wireshark does that for us. In the question, it actually told us where to go. It told us to go to the statistics, capture file properties. So let's do that. Click on statistics. Click on Capture File Properties. And we're presented with this window. This window will tell us how many bytes are being currently shown to us versus how many are, bytes exist totally in this trace file. The answer is just the bytes, not the percentage. Again, please let me know if I'm going too fast. If you're stuck on any question, please feel free to ask away. 2004, we're gonna look at an ESPN file. So let's click on that and open it up in Wireshark for our next question. 
there is a section where we can see the protocol hierarchy statistics. The question that we want to answer is how many packets were fragments of PNG? Well, to get to this that we're looking for, we need to go under statistics and click on protocol hierarchy. That should show us this. But it doesn't really tell us fragments, does it? So what we can do is we can right click on PNG, which is Portable Network Graphic. And we can apply as a filter, selected. So once again, to get to this, you need to go under Statistics, Protocol Hierarchy. Then you will see this pop up. In order to dig down to our answer, we're going to right click this, apply as a filter, selected. In Wireshark, we see that a filter was applied and now we have a couple of, of uh, packets. But this also doesn't give us the answer we're looking for. What we need to do to this is make one change. And if you follow the, the rabbit hole, we're gonna right click on transmission control protocol. We're gonna go under protocol preferences and disable the third option, allow sub dissectors to reassemble TCP streams. So once again, after applying the PNG filter, and only seeing 10 packets, we're gonna click on the first packet, right click TCP, go under protocol preferences and uncheck the third option, allow sub dissectors to reassemble TCP streams. When you do that, you will see how many packets are fragments. I see a question in the chat. Having issues downloading PCAP file in Chrome. Have you tried downloading them in Firefox? I think when you click the link in Firefox, it tell, it asks you if you want to just open it directly, which could be better since we're moving from file to file throughout this, this CTF. Hey, people are making progress. This is awesome. Um, before I continue to showing more questions, I'll wait uh, 10 minutes. If anybody has been trying the harder questions and it's stuck, feel free to ask. For my beginners, feel free to continue into 2004 and beyond or try out any of the Wireshark 101s. But in about nine minutes, I'll continue 
uh, with the next questions in beginner. Hey, uh, Irvin, just got a yes. quick question. Um, between the Wireshark 101 and um, on 102, it's kind of, the question should be pretty straightforward, but I've seen no one has solved it. <laughs> Any hints on this one? Is it just the formatting? Let me see. Uh, name 102. So I'll add a, Example, oops. So now if you look at 102, you have an example of how it, it's asking for the answer. All right, cool, let me try that again, thanks. Running into a problem in 2006. Uh, 2006 in which category, Glenn? Uh, well, I'll get to 2006 in a bit in, in beginner because we just stopped at 2003. No, we stopped at 2004. That's the one we just did. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do the I'll get to that one in like eight minutes when we are. Yeah, we'll hit 2005 and then 2006. There you go. I got, I got one or two now. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. <laughs> Anyone else stuck in any of the Wireshark 101s, network analysis, the Workbook or troubleshooting that needs a hint. Hey, anybody working on the harder ones that need a uh, need a, a hint, a clue before I continue with beginner? Uh, Two thousand six in net analysis. Yeah, I'll I'll do beginner as soon as I I just want to make sure that anybody who's working on the harder levels and needs a hint. Uh, to, uh, this is their chance to ask. Uh, for now, since we are doing this live, you can ask for hints here. After we're done with this event, you can ask in Discord.
when there are two items to answer, normally it will be uh, it the answer one comma space answer two. If there's a specific question you're asking about Samuel, let me know and um, I can make a change to have it clear. Yes, at the end, I'll give you a brief overview of Discord. Uh, TR06. Scroll to that. After removing all the noise, the common protocols, how many packets remain? Uh, am I looking for only TCP packets? Well, you want to remove the noise, so anything that is common. And there are a couple of common protocols. Looks like there are at least two layer seven protocols and uh, one layer four, one layer, what is that, two? That you can remove out of the way and then you'll be able to uh, see what's left. So that, that question's all about reducing the protocols that are common that you, that you would see in any, any network. So that's kind of the clue. Remove the things you would see on any network. Okay. There. Yeah, I'm uh, not sure why that person thought they could do that, but. <laughs> so far now I have everybody muted. So we'll just, we'll just stick to the chat. Yep, that's exactly what I did. I muted everyone without the availability to unmute. Oh, well, all right. Let's see, we stopped on 2004, 2005. Identify the most active conversations. Have another file to download and open. We're looking at the statistics conversations. So we can open that file up, switch over to Wireshark. Under statistics conversations from the menu and we are presented with this. And what we want to find out is what is the, the time for the longest specific conversation. So you can look around. That could be specific, but that's not exactly what we're looking for. It probably will not be here because we want specific. So it's probably going to land between TCP and UDP. And there's a duration column that you can sort by to find what the answer is. Now, while you do that, I see a question about beginner 2003 that I can uh, quickly answer. How do I apply the filter? So what you need to do is copy the entire section that's in bold from TCP analysis to window update, hit copy. And in that file, 
you will paste it right up here where it says apply a display filter. That bar will go green indicating that the display filter you entered is correct. And then you hit enter. And it will change the number of packets that you see on screen. Two thousand six. A question we had some folks asking about. This is sec client pcap and g, so I'll have that open. Using the same file, we're going to open statistics packet lengths. So let's do that. Let's go to statistics. Let's go to packet lengths. And what are we presented with? this little thing. We can apply filters directly to view data as we want. If we want to focus, and here's the question down at the bottom, if we want to focus on two packets with similar size, what is the full display filter? Two packets of similar size. We're looking at this list at the count column. Here are two packets that have similar size. So what we can do is uh, we know the, the length. So 640 to 1279. Uh oh. Open up Wireshark. There we go. Is we need to make a display filter for packet lengths of six, what did I say, 649? I have the picture. 640 to 1279. Anything that you want to make a filter for, you can find in the packets in, uh, in here, in the packet details pane. So what we need to do is find, we can either find or uh, test uh, you know, in, in here for the proper Thing that we're looking for. Let me pull this up. So there is a length that we can use as a filter. It is in, should be right, right within here, actually. Frame cap length, frame length. So if uh, you're looking at my screen down at the bottom, anytime that you click on something within details pane, you'll see an explanation and in parentheses what you would use as a, uh, as a filter. So frame.len is really what we're looking for. So frame.len would be the start. Now we can use some things like greater than equal to, and the number we said was uh, 640. We can also add onto our display filter to make like a minimum and maximum. And you notice as I'm typing, the, that bar is going red and green. So right now, if, if it was just this, we could hit enter and we would see all packets that have a frame length of greater than or equal to 640. But we don't just want all of those. We want to focus on two packets. So we should be able to do an and because we want to join two together and do frame.len with less than equal to uh, 1279. I'm looking at the picture that I have on the, on the CTF. And you see the bar turned green. So this puts our display filter in saying 
uh, Wireshark, show me all packets that have the frame length of greater than or equal to 640 and have a frame length that goes no more than 1279. That should narrow down what you're looking for to that minimum maximum. Yeah, 640, 1279. That's the that's the one we're looking for. So as you can see, you can join multiple display filters together with operands like an end. Let's see the scoreboard before we move on to 3000s. Serlin is still in the lead. 22 players. Cool, cool. Um, anyone still stuck on any questions in the thousands or two thousands? Oh, I see a question for something that is in Wireshark 101. Looking at question 301, how many tra frames travel to or from that specific um, looking at 301, but if I do IP source or destination, I get 519. If I do IP adder, 519, but the answer is not accepted. So, uh, Phil, there is a simpler way to do IP source or destination, and that's actually by using IP adder. So, like this IP.addr equals equals, and then the IP address you want. That way, it, it takes the IP address either way for a specific address. So you don't have to do IP source or IP destination. Um, it, you shouldn't be missing anything after doing that. You, the answer should appear um, at the bottom where it shows you the total display packets. Yeah, yeah, that it works. So I would try just doing the IP adder. Uh, remove any, uh, wait, are you on the right file? Because I just did that on my computer and I got the right answer. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, yeah, you're looking at the wrong place. That's what's happening, is you're looking at the wrong place. 
So uh, you are correct in 519, but you're looking at the wrong location. Right place, wrong location. Let's see, I thought I saw another question. Finally got going, 1001 beginners. What command syntax do I use to look up for wireshark.org? I don't know what you're looking for. Three thousand one. We're going to look at the colors that Wireshark has been showing us in the trace files that we've opened, and we're going to open another one, Yahoo via Firefox. And we want to put our focus on packet eight hundred four. So rather than scrolling through 803 packets, we should be able to just type packet number, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's packet.num. Nope, or is it packet number? You know what's the easy way is to just go, oh, frame number. <laughs> Frame.number. So as you saw, when I typed packet, that was incorrect. The bar was red. I looked in the packet details pane. I see frame number one, there's frame number one. Down here, it says frame.number. That's the correct syntax. Frame.number equals 804. So we just zoomed and focused on that one packet because that's, that's for question 3001. What color or what rule color packet 804? So just like I was able to quickly sort through to get to that packet, this packet was given a specific color. In here, uh, actually right in, in the frame section, you will find the answer to see what rule colored that packet. And if you want a reference of the colors, I kind of showed you them. Uh, here. Okay. Any questions on 301 before I move on to 302? Whoa, Sterling took a boost. Okay, 3002, we're using the same file, awesome. 
what rule was used to color DNS packets? Going back to Wireshark, let's remove this display filter. Lucky for us, DNS packets are right up at the beginning. So you can just scroll inside of the packet details frame for frame one. And in the same place where you saw the answer to 3001, you'll see the answer for 3002. Sterling is just on a roll. Yeah, be careful with that uh, Sterling guy. He's dangerous. <laughs> Can't get Wireshark 101 or 301. Oh, oh Wireshark 101, question 301. Uh, so similar to Phil, oh wait, uh, question 301 doesn't need a, a IO graph. This one, this one doesn't need an, a graph, this one uh, you just need to filter for any packets that come in and out, in or out of this IP address. And the easiest way is to just make the one filter that does both at once, which is IP.ADDR. Oh, I mean question 501. The IO graph with the bits per second, uh, 501. Um, so it accepts the answer. It's a six digit number. So it, it actually accepts a six digit number, a six digit whole number. It also accepts it if you did it as something like 10K or you know, like 10 with the letter K. It also accepts it that way as well. But it is looking for a whole number. And all that you should really do is make the graph statistics, IO graph. And set the y axis. That's incorrect. So let's remove these guys from packets. To bits per second, which is the third option here. So that peak, that highest peak, you would zoom in.
Oh, I see. So, it should try it, try again. Okay, that was my mistake, but good thing is we can easily fix these. Let's see, uh, did I do 3004? I have not done 3004 or three. Actually, I haven't started the 3000s. That's right. Oh yeah, we did this one to colorize that traffic and we did this one. So we are on 3003. Good thing is I'm not playing. <laughs> so you can minus all the points you want from me. <laughs> um, question 3003. I know I'm cheating. I can see all the answers. Here are a list of comparison operators we used and recently. You could also use the actual word and uh, or things like not equal the not equal or NE, various ways to get what you want. Uh, but what we're looking for in HTTP download bad is what is the name of the file being downloaded? So we can open up HTTP download bad and we should be able to just copy that filter that's provided for us here and see what we can find. So take the filter that is right above the question in 3003, apply it to HTTP download bad and you should see the answer. Three thousand four is similar, but uses a different file. HTTP download good. Same with three thousand five. Uh, Roman, please try again. And uh, Simon as well. Tell me if it works. It should just be the file name, not the whole, not the whole string. So for example, looking at question 3000, and three, it is not everything starting from this slash. It's just the name of the file itself. Uh, yes, you should be adding the extension. So for 3003, it would be from this capital O all the way out to .exe.
Sterling at 400. With almost a tie for second place. All right, 3006, because five was the last one of that. 3006. I'm going to use graphs now. We want to open up this file. And to get to a, a graph like this, we need to go to statistics. IO graphs. So once that file is opened, go under statistics, IO graphs. Now I need to change this back to make it look just like the picture. And looks like we need to add another in display filter. It's a TCP dot analysis dot flags. And we want it to be a bar. And it looks like we can change the color to red. That just made an exact replica of the graph you see in the question, in question 3006. So the question is asking what packet was used to calculate the highest point in the graph? Well, that's not the highest point. That's the highest point. Now, interestingly enough, if I click on that high point, you see over here, in italicize, it says no packets in interval. Well, that's because we've highlighted over this rule. If you highlight over the correct rule that made the line, suddenly you see packets. For example, in the second highest point, you see that that, made, that was created by packet 5756. So now just by moving your mouse around, the other points, you'll be able to see the answer to this question. Uh, Wireshark 101, question 602. It is asking for the entire uh, location the entire URI or URL. And that is case insensitive. Yeah, it's looking for the entire length of the address. Anyone uh, uh, stuck on any questions so far? Now we're about halfway through the 3000s. And we also have 30 minutes left on this event. Yeah, it wants the whole thing.
I have added an example to that question. Where do I get the PDF of the questions? Um, there's no PDF of these questions. They are all in this CTF. Any hints for 601? I'm trying to find the JPs that don't respond with 304 and has raw data. Philip found the file names. Don't know the format expected by the flag. It is just the file name. So I'll put an example, a example, file1.jpg comma file2.jpg. And update. So now if you reopen that question, 601, I'll go to it here. You have an example. Sterling is definitely going to win if this was a real contest. Um, so with less than 30 minutes left, I can, I can show whichever questions you'd like. I can also let you guys keep going. And whenever you get stuck on a question, you can ask away. Again, this site will stay on, so you can continue when, uh, beyond this event. Eventually, when another event rolls around, I'll reset this, but uh, the link will stay up and the game will stay available to anyone. Let me know if there's a question you want me to demo. Or one that you're stuck on.
Beginner 3007. The X and Y axis. Recreate the graph above. What is the new peak? So I open the file up. I go into IO graphs. I have this from what we did earlier. We want to change to time of day and we want to click on log scale. So that has now altered our graph to match the, uh, the one in the picture. So now highlighting on the all packets, you can move around again to find the, the new peak and that packet that constitutes that, that new highest peak is uh, the answer. It should be a rounded number. Yes. So that question should really say, what is the new peak packet number? Uh, in 1.07, oh, someone's trying the, the workbook. Awesome. It's asking about the URI in frame nine but it is marked as wrong. Well, I see what you submitted and that is incorrect because that is not what it's asking for. In Wireshark 101 Challenge 701, it asks for a message, but there are three messages in the PCAP. Um, There should be one that it's really looking for. The message in the annotation. Let's go back to, oh, not that one, this one. Yeah, there, it should be. It, it should be one message, not the not the individual ones for the packets. So I added the word overall to that question. Phil, were you able to solve a 1.07? You were really close to the answer.
Geminis and Aleph Nov. Pretty much neck and neck. About 18 minutes. Let's see who actually ends up taking second place. Fifteen minutes left. Like I said, feel free to try other questions. For example, for all our beginner folks, feel free to try out any of the Wireshark 101s or continue in the beginner category. If you're stuck on any, please ask away. Or 3007. Isn't it the number from the left scale? Um, yes, it should be the number from the left, rounded, of course. For 3007, the number is rounded. For 2.07, 2.07, 
2.07. What version of web software is running on the server? Answer in the form of the program, the version number, and the operating system. So uh, Phil, you have given two of the three things you need to answer that question. Answer the pro, uh, program, you have that. Version number, you have that, but you're missing the OS. Ah, then let me fix that. Answer in the form, colon, program version OS. That's okay. So now if you refresh that question, it should look, uh, it should look a little better. Answer in the form, program version of us. Uh, PK, are you asking about question uh, 3007? So here is the graph. And that looks like it's the new peak. So what I'll do is I will zoom in to that peak. As far down as I can with keeping whole numbers. There you go. I'm glad you got it, Phil. Let me make a flag that will do it in commas as well. Just in case. There we go. We have 10 minutes left. So uh, let me go to I'll wait four more minutes for any uh, any other questions, and then I'll take the last you know, the last five minutes. I know somebody asked me to explain Discord, so I'll do that briefly, and then I'll hand it back to Rod.
2.12 is not that what you gave, Phil. That is not the browser that is being used by the client. But you are right in what frame to look at. It's just looking for the one, the one um, browser. So it's not, it's not a browser in another mode. Gotcha. Yeah, that should work. Um, so briefly showing Discord. Discord is a free either application or you can use it totally in the browser. Um, in the Wireshark CTF on the homepage, I have a link to join this specific Discord server where I have all of my classes. Uh, you are welcome to join. When you do get there, uh, there are there are rules like there are in most uh, Discord servers to read through. Uh, then you can go to assigned course and you just click on the one you want. So for example, if you wanted to continue this CTF and if you get stuck on something, you wanted to ask a question, well, it's all uh, CIS 140 NA. That's uh, the shark. So you would just click on the little shark and you will be given the role like these folks and then you'll be able to see the conversations for that specific class and, and chat with others who are also working on this CTF as well. It's just like Slack. It's, uh, you know, they have the various rooms to chat with others and whatnot. Um, pretty easy to use. If you get stuck on anything, please feel free to ask away. But this is what you should see when you immediately log in. Uh, when you click on that link, create an account and join it, you'll, uh, the general will look like that. But what you really want to do is go to a sign course and pick the shark so that you join 
CS140NA. All right, we're getting ready to close and call it or no, we're not calling it yet. Um, I will leave that to you. What's up? Well, you're the, the, the CTF master. You had to, you had to decide when you want to cut it off. I um, mean, we can call it off at, at, uh, is that one o'clock my time, four o'clock yours? Yeah, it's about to be four o'clock. Um, well, it definitely looks like Serlin won. It's, it, it happens, it, they happen to be usually Buffalo then, the, the, like the, the teams that are always competing each other at Hack Miami. That's actually kind of cool. Um, These two kept going neck yeah, and yeah, neck. No, they're, they're pretty Look amazing. They, they have, they have uh, we do, they had the flag here in um, the ISSA in Florida and uh, they usually top of their teams. Uh, so that's, that's cool to see this. Um, but if you want to leave it on, I mean, it's all oh, yeah. you. It's yeah, this, this is, I'm going to keep this CTF on and just, just running. That way anybody can jump in later to do more questions and, and whatnot. So yeah, it, it'll stay up. But we'll say for, for the sake of today, we'll, right. we'll call it in, in a minute, which we'll I mean. We'll call it in a minute. OK, so you can call it and then. <laughs> uh, 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 and then stop the recording so we have a a a, um, a record for the day and yeah looks like if Geminis answers a question a ten pointer they'll catch up <laughs> that's good it's a no biter yeah so what's the tens any of the of the Wireshark 101s, or even any of the network analysis will push them up. Philly is doing a lot of catching up in the last couple yeah, of seconds. Yeah. That's cool. I see at one o'clock. My <laughs> time. <laughs> so we can call it as this. All right. So uh, congratulations to Sir Lynn. I told you that guy was dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Sam. Good for you. Um, all right. Is there any um, um, prizes or just uh, bragging rights? I guess bragging rights. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, will be will the recording be placed again? Yeah, we'll 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 put it up in. Um, and the Hack Miami channel, as soon as I get the uh, the recording, it looks like uh, Will wants to speak. Uh, you see the hand, this is right? I do see the hand. Yeah. Uh, ask to unmute. Uh, Alpine, whoever that was, that took second place. Good job. I was Jen Minnis, by the way. <laughs> Put oh. up a good fight. Is that all of you guys in the same place? No, no, actually, uh, my one of my con uh, the guys up in Toronto, he was hopping on. I think he finished uh, a little bit further on down, but okay. Oh well, uh, next time. Why is Philip right? Philip, right it's Sam Philip, and I don't know Geminis. I don't know who Geminis is. That's me. That's you. Oh, Dan, dude, awesome, awesome. That was my. That was actually my first packet capture the flag. I've done other capture the flags, ones that you've actually hosted yourself, but this is the first time I did a packet capture the flag. So that's pretty good. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, all of you for participating. Congratulations and uh, thank you, Urban. We'll we'll have to do this again. And uh, I, I want to try like um, like replicating the actual uh, at one point do like a, a higher level like a capture the packet. Uh, like Respeto was doing, because that way you guys can train and get ready for that film. Um, and, and we can try the like more difficult, difficult things, you know, more code, uh, player, do stuff. So this was pretty awesome. Thank you very much. And um, we'll see you guys soon.